Okie dokie. Welcome, welcome. Uh, tonight for the stream, we're going to do a full tutorial of WWF Royal Rumble to start things out. So I'm thinking it'll take around a half hour, 45 minutes tops, and then I'll go ahead and stop the local recording and then restart it so that we can do our normal stream. But I um, figured I'd do an in-depth um, tutorial to start just so we can have one out there. There's not a video tutorial of this game that I know of out there. So it'd be good to kind of have that out there for people that need uh, help on the game or need to have a better idea of how the game plays, things like that, all the rules. Um, so we'll do that first. Um, I might not be as active in the, uh, keeping an eye on the chat while I'm doing that part, but again, I'll, I'll try and keep an eye on it just in case I misspeak and someone corrects me, things like that, to get the tutorial right. So we'll go ahead and get started. So, all right. So I had this game on tournament mode. I highly recommend if you had this game to set it to IFPA tournament mode. Um, there are many skill shots that could appear on the screen at the start of your ball like this, but in tournament mode it will always be these three. 3x bonus multiplier, uh, pr uh, pretty easy to understand. Pop bonus, that puts on super pops, which are a, a, a 100,000 points a pop, and then just a straight 10 million points. And this is not really a skill shot, it's more like a plunge award. So uh, when you hit the plunge button, uh, whichever one's lit, that's the one you're going to get. Then the game additionally has a second skill shot, which is your standard flashing lane that you can switch with the flippers. If you land in that, you'll get 10 million points. If you do that all three balls, on the third ball you'll get 20 million instead of 10 million. So there's two parts to the skill shot. There's the one you just select and get by plunging, and then there's the, the Litz uh, a lane up top. In tournament mode with these three, I mean, you really can't go wrong with any of them. Uh, your bonus can be pretty big if you have a really long ball. Um, it can be a lot more than 10 million. Uh, the pops bonus, if you're getting into multi-balls and, and you got some lively pops on the game you're playing, that could be pretty lucrative. I would say that's probably the least of the three that I've seen, um, but yeah, doing starting your multipliers off at three or taking 10 million seems to be pretty equal, but if you have a really long ball, your 3x multiplier could be better for you, so we'll just do 10 million, and then uh, again, I try and get that flashing lane too, I missed it, and just like your standard games, if you... If you light up all three lanes back there, you can switch with your flippers. If you light up all three lanes, that, you're, uh, that increases your bonus multiplier. What also increases your bonus multiplier are the WWF drop targets up in the upper play field. So if you're up there and you hit down the drop targets while nothing else is going on, you'll increase your bonus multiplier that way. Bonus multipliers go all the way up to 9x. Once you surpass 9x, I believe it lights extra ball. Um... And then there's one more award you can get for the um, the bonus multipliers. I'm trying to find it here in the rules real quick. Sorry, I don't want to take up too much time on it, but just kind of want to cover everything. Um, oh, so a a a a after you get 9x, you complete it again, and you'll light extra ball on the left mode scoop over here. Then if you do it again, I believe it's just five million a pop. So each time you increase your bonus X past that, it's going to be five million a pop. There's a bonus hold somewhere in there. Oh, sorry. You, you get to nine X bonus. The next time you increase your bonus X, it's a bonus hold. Um, then it's extra ball light. Then after that, each time you do it, you'll get five million points. Um, the next piece of the game are the uh, modes. So down in here in between your flippers you have nine modes uh, right now I have bonsai lit up um, now you can see as I hit the center ramp the modes move to the center ladder and each time you hit that center shot it will change the mode but it'll change the center mode so if you wanted to change to a different ladder of modes you'd have to hit that shot so if you see the white flashing shots the left ramp and the right orbit that will change the um, the ladder of modes 
So if I can hit one of those two, I'll show you. Come on, Eric. Um, so there we go. So now you see I'm on the left ladder. Now if I don't want light extra ball mode, I can hit the left ladder again and get to pandemonium. That's a very lucrative mode, so I would like to try and start this mode. You can start the modes one of two ways. Hit either scoot that's on the left side of the game. Pandemonium is a switch based mode. You can see um, I'm getting 250k per switch that I hit. I can add a ball to this mode if I can get to the upper play field and put it in the kickback that's in the upper play field. It's flashing yellow right now. I have 10 seconds to get up there and add a ball or else the mode will end. I can get to the upper play field by hitting the left ramp or by hitting the far right shot, which is also the Macho Madness shot. But it looks like I'm going to so drain out of this mode without adding a ball. But that mode's pretty lucrative. If I would have gotten to the upper play field and hit that yellow kickback shot on the top left, it's kind of like the left orbit of the upper play field, it'll add a ball. And you can keep adding balls until you have up to six on the play field. And if you can get to that point, um, the switch mode value increases as well. So start at 250. I think each ball you add, it increases the value of the switches. So with every switch you're hitting, I think I've seen it as high as almost a million. So if you got six balls out there hitting switches all over the play field, I mean, that mode can be insane. Got nut, round dog, what's up? Okay, so again, uh, what I was saying before Pandemonium started, you can start your modes by either scoop. There's one right to the left of the center ramp, and there's one right to the left of the left ramp. You can see now uh, the scoops are not lit. To relight them, you hit the center ramp. Or just drain yeah. us. But, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. so when that, that white flashing shot on the center ramp, it's not lit now because at the start of your ball, both mode holes will be lit. So you can see the white lights on the, the two mode scoops. Um, that's how you start your mode. Each time you play a mode, those lights will be out. And to relight them, you have to hit the center ramp. Hitting the center ramp one time will light one of the holes. Hitting the ra center ramp a second time will light the second hole. But again, at the start of every ball, you're going to have those mode shot, those mode holes lit. Um, uh, remember, each major sh shot applies to a different ladder of the mode. So, if you don't want to play Raise the Undertaker, which is what I play right now, like I want to, I want to play Sleeper Pop or Super Pops Sleeper Hold. So now that one's lit. So now I can hit in the. Well, tried to hit in the. Now, since I hit the left ramp, it changes the mode again. So if I want to get back to that sleeper pop, so I gotta hit the center ramp. So I, I, I started my mode. Now uh, the sleeper pops mode is just a fairly straightforward mode. You just gotta get it into the pops, and once you hit a certain number of pops, the mode ends to give you your reward for 30 million. I only hit one on that trip, so to feed the pops, you wanna hit the right orbit. You can backhand it there. Never tried that before, actually. So I got a couple more up there. So I don't think I completed it, but that's essentially how that mode works. Now this mode I just started over here. I, I came down the top side of this left, like kind of like half orbit over here behind the tombstone. Drop targets. That's called into the ring. You can see it starts to hurry up at at that shot. Now. I started it by going down the top of it. Once it starts, it starts that hurry up for 10 or 11 million or whatever. Uh, to collect it, I have to shoot it back up that shot. There's two switches there, the, or rollovers. You got to roll over both of them to collect. Okay, um, very tough shot. The value is never that high uh, because in tournament mode, I don't I don't think it carries over ball to ball. It just carries over player to player and then resets each game. So it starts like 10 million. 
there's something on the play field that increases that value throughout the game but I don't really know what it is and whatever does increase it, it's not by that much. So if you ever light in the ring, don't go out of your way to get it because it's a really dangerous shot and it's never really worth that much. You'll see as we get into multi-ball and play some other modes that you can get way more points than you could from that uh, dinky little hurry up. So, so through shooting, I have lit multi-ball. That's why the game's going a little nuts right now. Um, we'll show you how to start multi-ball in the next game, but to... Uh, to actually physically start multi-ball, once you have it lit, which is lit right now, you can either hit the right uh, VUK, which is this far right shot, which is the Macho Mana shot. It's got a flashing green shot in front of it. Let's try and hit that so it's easy to see. But you can also start it by hitting the upper play field from the yeah. left ramp. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. it's weird. Like, I feel yeah. like the multi ball just starts right away. But I think technically you're supposed to hit the right orbit of the upper play field to start multi ball. So if you hit the Macho Madness VUK, it'll start right away. If you feed the upper play field from the left ramp, I believe you're supposed to loop it around the right orbit of the upper play field. But again, I've hit up there before, and I don't know if I have just a too sensitive switch up there, but I I feel like it starts right away sometimes if you just feed the upper play field. So we'll, uh, we'll get in the, the nitty-gritty of the multi-ball rules in a little bit. But um, And as we're playing the game, I will – I'm not going to try and play every mode and show you how they all work. We'll just kind of – as I – play different modes, I'll just kind of chime in and say what the rules are. They're all pretty straightforward. What's more important is, and with a lot of these Dead East games, you just gotta know how to restart the modes. Cause it's it's kind of like Adam's family. You kind of just want to keep touring the mansion, just light mode, start mode, light mode, start mode. That's exactly how this game is. And honestly, the most valuable mode in the game is multi-ball. Uh, Pandemonium's great, but it's just really tough to cash in. So typically, if you're a tournament player, you're going to be playing for multi-ball only. But again, it's nice to know what's going to start your modes. There's one item related to starting modes that I did not tell you about, and we will show that right here. <clears throat> so remember, modes are always ready to start at the start of the ball. Um, we'll collect our wrestlers here at the center ramp. And we'll talk about how those work here in a minute, because that works towards multi-ball. But I want to... Man. Center ramp's usually really easy. There we go. So, I'll hit this center ramp one more time. So see how I'm getting Macho Man letters? Each time I hit that ramp, and, and there's a few other shots in the game that'll spot you Macho yeah. Man letters. The center ramp, I believe, I believe hitting um, the kickback shot in the upper play field will give you Macho Man letters, and maybe even hitting the Macho Man shot. But anyway, another way to start a mode without physically having to hit the mode holes is by getting O in Macho Man. I don't know if my Macho Man letters carry over ball to ball, but let's see if they do. Because we, we collected one, I think, on that last ball, so we should be on the A or the C here. Yeah, so they carry over. And like I said, once you get to O, it'll just start a mode. So if we hit it one more time. Oh, boy. Okay, so if you see that you're close to getting in to O on Macho Man, you can use that to um, start a mode. Now, Undertaker, all you want to do is hit the dead drop targets that are on the left here. And they're progressively worth more. So the first one's worth two million. It says it on the DMD. Then it's worth like three or four, or, or it might just go up by one each time for a maximum of ten million. So had I kept hitting those, each time you hit a drop target, they all come back up. So just remember, if you're in the Undertaker mode, it's all those drop targets, and they increase in value each time you hit one, all the way up to ten million for a max. Hogan sex tape multi ball? Yeah, I wish. <laughs> With this new color DMD, it would look swell, too.
Oh, baby. Um, so let's talk about... So I'm kind of working my way around the play field here. Let's talk about the, uh, the tag targets. So the tag targets are on either side of the right orbit. There's one set of tag targets right here on the right that face the left. There's another set of tag targets that are further up in the orbit that face the right. They both spell tag, and they both do pretty much the same thing when you complete them. Here's our super pops. Okay, so if we want to try and hit these tag targets... So we got one there. So those are our Macho Man shots, so I was right. That'll give you Macho Man letters too. a little bit easier to hit these tag targets. Okay, there's a couple more. Just want to see if I can get one of them lit. There's one. So see, I spelled one. When you, sp when you spell tag, it lights your um, your plunge button. Uh, just like on, on Lethal Weapon, how it had the gun, you have to do the Uzi modes and shoot really quick. On this, that's how the tag targets work. If you spell tag, the the tag button, which is your launch button, will light. You hit it three times, and you'll get a five million bonus. Not worth that much, but uh, but more importantly, if you do both the tag sets, <clears throat> it will light. There's a captive ball. So there's a captive ball back behind the left set of tag targets. If you spell, and you can see it carries over ball to ball. I'm going to have to let my dog out after this ball. Hold on one second. <laughs> um, um, so we got one more uh, letter on the right side tag targets to complete both of them. And again, if I, if I spell that second tag, it's going to start that button hurry up. Um, Oh, these are a lot harder when I purposely go for them. I kind of just let these targets happen. Like I said, you're not going to get that much from completing the mode. I mean, you're only going to get 5 million points, and you got to take your hands off the game. It's dangerous. But if you light the captive ball, it's a pretty decent amount of points. It starts at like 10 million, then gets to 20 million, but I kind of wish that that captive ball would spot you a tag target. That would help make it a little more valuable. Oh, I thought I hit that. Try one more time. But anyway, point is, once you have collected both tags, hit the captive ball for 10 million points. Complete them again, hit the captive ball for 20 million points. And I think that value just keeps raising. So that's something to think about. If that, uh, if you've completed both tag targets, sets of tag targets, and the um, and the captive ball is lit, it'll say collect tag on it. So if you see that lit, go ahead and try and shoot for it because it's you know worth at least 10 million points and and goes up from there. So not a terrible thing to go after, but I'll be right back. Okay, so we talked about tag targets, we talked about Macho Man Letters. So the other thing Macho Man Letters does is works you toward the Macho Madness mode. So however you're collecting your letters, once you collect them all, it's, it'll light uh, Macho Madness, which is that far right shot. So let's see if we can't start that. Whoa. There is a ball save on this game, but you got to drain pretty quick. I don't know if it's timed or based off switches, but there is a ball save. That's not indicated on the DMD or anything flashing on the play field. Also, when you start multi-ball, there's a timed ball save as well. 
So let's see if we can't just spam this center ramp and spell Macho Man. Woo! Gotta start making shots here. So it's starting to spell Macho Man. Even no rubber, the center post will save you sometimes. Okay, search for doink mode. All the holes in the game. So the two scoops and the kickback up top. One of those is worth 25 million, but it won't tell you what it is. So, and if you hit the one that doink is in, you get 25 million. I think if you hit one that he's not in, you get like five or six million. But so we've hit the center ramp enough, and you can see Macho Madness is lit on the right. It's a tough shot, but if you can if you can learn how to hit that that ring shot on the far right, that can be good. Because if you can stay in an upper play field, lots of good stuff happens up there. Okay, so drop targets. You complete the drop targets. For, you can see the timer is not very long up there. So it just goes through all three of the championship belts up there. And you only have a certain amount of time to collect one by hitting the drop targets. That Macho Madness mode can be very lucrative if you can collect all those belts before the timers run out for each one. And then if you do, a 20 million point hurry up lights at the upper play field's right loop. And then if you hit that, obviously you get 20 million. So that mode can be lucrative, but as you saw, I quickly drained out of there without collecting any belts or the hurry up at the end. So if you're playing Macho Manish, you gotta you gotta be on it. So here's our super pops mode again. We just gotta hit a certain number of pops. But I'm gonna try and get back in on Macho Manish to see if we can't show some more of that. God, I can't. Let's start it. Oh, not. I guess I have to hit the far right shot. So I got madness lit again. Get in there. So yeah, not a gimme shot. See if it stays lit for the next ball. Okay, that's good. At least I mean, if you're walk, if you're if you're trying to play for Macho Madness, at least you don't have to restart every ball. As you can see, it's still lit. So. Try and get up there one more time, real quick. See if we can't cash in on a, a decent madness mode. There we go. Guys, as <laughs> many flippers. There's not enough real estate on them. So again, that mode's very tough. You you almost. I think if you get right back up there, you might be able to stay in it, but that mode's very tough to complete. So we got Pandemonium. Let's see if we can do, do, do something with that. Let's see a little bit more of that mode. Because that one can be real good. Oh, that was a tough shot. Even when you make it, you don't make it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. After this game, we'll we'll start over and um, show you exactly how the um, how the multi ball works. Because after that, there's not. Okay, here's pandemonium. So again, we want to try and get to the upper play field and hit that captive ball or that kickback shot. It's that blinking yellow shot. Oh, I just missed it. It's very hard to get the ball to stick up in there. Oh. But that shot that I keep hitting it up into and it's just not staying up there, that's the one you want to add a ball. <laughs> you almost want to loop the ball around so you have enough speed to... Oh. Yeah, so you get the idea. But I think my game might just be a little bit too steep because the ball just doesn't like to sit in there unless you hit it absolutely perfect. 
But you can see hitting the drop targets, like I said before, increases your bonus multiplier. So if you can stay up here, you can really rack up your bonus multiplier. So basically anytime you do anything in the upper upper play field ring, like collect a uh, bonus multiplier, or there's a looping millions mode where if you just loop hit the the loop on the upper play field, you'll get 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, 4 million, 5 million points. Um, an exit uh, diverter opens up, and then if you exit the ring, you get a 5 million point bonus. But like I said, you really don't want to go after that when you're trying to increase your bonus multipliers and stuff. So just try to avoid that and stay up there as long as you can. So let's see, I think we covered most everything. Like I said, there's some differences if your game's not in tournament mode. You don't get a, a, a pity multi-ball like a lot of data East do. Um, you get the same skill shot awards every time you start a game. Uh, those are all varied. They could be a ton of different things if you had it in normal uh, default mode. Uh, but like I said, I'd, I'd highly recommend keeping it in tournament mode. It keeps things pretty, pretty balanced and fair. Um, we talked about a lot of the modes, but we'll, we'll go over those a little bit more later, like as we play them kind of thing, like I was doing before. There's only a few that we haven't seen yet. Um, da -da 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 -da. so we're about to start talking about multiple. We talked, okay. There's one more thing we didn't talk about. It's the R, it's the rest in peace jackpot. So that's what the dead drop targets do. The ones down here next to the coffin. That's what those drop targets do outside of the Raise the Undertaker mode. So to collect the RIP jackpot, you just want to concentrate on those drop targets. So I got two of them down, I gotta get the other two down. And they are not easy to hit. First one is left. Oh no. Last one. Oh, I thought I had it. Oh. There we go. So see how the RIP came up? So I collected the R and it increases a value. It starts at around 15 million and increases each time you collect an RIP letter. Again, completing all of the dead drop targets gives you a letter for RIP and that carries over ball to ball. So since I collected the R now, I can go after the I and then the P on this next ball. Each time you collect a letter, the value for that jackpot increases until after you collect the P, it's around like 20 something million. However, like to get back into the ring shot. If you're having a multiplayer game in tournament mode, those jackpot values carry over from player to player. So if I collect the R and the I on my turn and increase that value to around 20 million, and then on your turn you collect the R, the I, and the P, you not only get the jackpot, you get the jackpot value that I had increased it to before you started collecting it and then you increased it even more by collecting your letters and then it even got bigger. So essentially collecting the RIP jackpot in a multiplayer game is much more lucrative than if you're playing by yourself. Because if you're playing by yourself, only you are increasing that value, not up to three other people as they play, if that makes sense. So now we are on to... Okay, there's one more. We have the chair bashing mode, which also involves the lane behind the drop targets. Very hard to start because unlike the get back into the ring hurry up, you don't go down the top of it, you gotta go up the bottom of it. And that's a very tough shot. But anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah. I hope we start it, but if we don't, essentially you hit the, the lane behind the drop targets, 
And if you hit that lane, it starts a frenzy chair bashing guy where there's a wrestler, like two wrestlers on the street, screen, hitting the crap out of each other with with uh, chairs. And it's the tag button. So the faster you hit the tag button, the more points you'll get. I think for the first however many hits, they're worth a, a five million a piece, or maybe a million a piece. Um, I think it's a million a piece. And then after that, they're worth 500,000 a piece. However, a very cool rule in this game, and there's multiple areas of the game where this comes into play. If you happen to trap up a ball during that chair bashing mode, just so you can like safely mash the button, the points you're getting for each button hit are like one tenth of what they normally be. So if they were 500k, they're only 50k. Or if they're 100k, they're only 10k. So the game doesn't want you to trap up while playing that mode. You'll get way more points if you're not trapped up while hitting the button. And that also comes into play during multi-ball. And that's what we're going to talk about now. If you see, at the start of the game, we have three flashing white shots. Those are the wrestler shots. There's three wrestlers on each shot, nine wrestlers total. We have the left ramp, the center ramp, right orbit. Each time you hit one of those shots, you collect that wrestler, and it moves down the ladder to the next wrestler. So we collect Yokozuma and moves on to the next wrestler. Doink. So now we got Doink. Moves on to the next wrestler. So center one is Hitman. Hacksaw. So we'll let this drain so we can keep getting wrestlers. And Lex Luger. And we'll try right orbit. Crush. And there's Big Boss Man. Then who's the last one over there? Oh yeah, Brit. Brit, or no, uh, Shawn Michaels. Oh. All right, and then when you're done, they're all lit solid. So I need to just collect my right orbit wrestlers. Okay, one more, and we'll have all nine collected. Once you have all nine collected, So all nine wrestlers are collected, multi balls ready to start. You can start it by the Macho Man shot on the far right, which feeds the upper play field, or left ramp. ramp is very wide at the opening but then it like uh, it gets very narrow behind it so there we go hit the upper play field hit the orb orbit multi-ball starts the jackpots are lit by the red shots one of the wrestler shots will be lit red that will collect a jackpot your goal during multi-ball is to um, collect all nine wrestlers again to light the super jackpot however if you can collect a wrestler and have it not be lit for a jackpot. So whichever shot is flashing, that's the one where you can collect a wrestler on. You cannot collect a wrestler or go to the next level of wrestlers until you've collected all three of them. Okay? So whereas when we started, we could hit any wrestler shot we wanted to until we got all three. When you're in multi-ball, you can't move on to the second level of wrestlers until you've completed the first level of every shot, if that makes sense. Now, to go back into multi-ball, I believe that's how you do it the second go-around. We'll see. So since we already played multi-ball once, they're going to make it harder on us to get back to it. See, I don't know why I didn't get a ball save there, but it, it, it must be switches and not time. But we'll play a, a couple, two, three games trying to get into multi-ball and, and try and light, hopefully collect a super jackpot because that's very difficult but also really sweet to go after. So 
So see, I can't collect the next wrestlers on these. So see the center ramp, I'm not gonna collect anybody but Brett. Now that I've hit everything, the next wrestler's like. So let's go after multi-ball again and see if we can't get a little bit further. Um, a few other rules in multi-ball. If you saw when I was on the upper play field, once multi-ball started, I was trying to hit the drop targets. Doing that will increase the base value of your jackpot in multi-ball. There's also another way to increase the value of your jackpots in multi-ball. Um, can't remember. Yeah, I thought there was another way to increase your uh, your multi-ball jackpots outside of hitting the drop targets during multi-ball. Um, but anyway, each time you collect a jackpot in multi-ball, it goes up in value, just kind of like any other game. But um, so let's, let's try and get back into multi-ball and see if we can uh, show off why that's the that's the way to go on this game. So if I'm just going for multi-ball, I used to, I like to start off just getting the center ramp done, then go right orbit, and just kind of take it from there. And just let the feeds dictate where I'm going to go. Because whether you're on the right or left flipper, you're going to have a shot you want to go after for multi-ball. So this is just like Lethal Weapon 2, if you've played that, where you're fighting, you just have to hit the flipper buttons until your side fills up before the other guy. See that loop I made? That's that animation up there. So one more to the right orbit, and we'll have multi-ball ready to start. On every plunge it gives you one of the wrestlers because if you notice we still needed one wrestler when we drained that last ball but now we have multi-ball ready to start yeah so that time I definitely didn't get to the upper play field but I think I hit the switch at the very top of the left ramp and that started multi-ball so again not sure if that's supposed to happen but it did <laughs> Each time you hit the jackpot, it moves to a different shot and increases in value. And again, it won't let you select or collect more wrestlers until you've collected at least one of all three. Ugh. Damn. And that stinks because... If you don't collect any jackpots in a multi-ball, you get to restart multi-ball by hitting the 
He either shot that starts multi-ball, the left ramp or the, the Macho Man shot. But if you collect just one jackpot, then you're done if you drain out a multi-ball. So that kind of stinks. So we're trying to work our way back. So I got the collect tag uh, captive ball there. So I believe that gave me 20 million. Because it gave me 10 million the first time I there's a switch back there that the ball runs over. I think it gives you 10 each time it runs over. And I don't know if that's supposed to happen either. But uh, some of the rules are kind of murky because I think there's a, a few bugs in the game where like it says you're getting one score but you get a different score, things like that. Um, not every mode behaves exactly the same every time. But other than that, I mean, it's a pretty, pretty solid game, pretty even, evenly balanced with the scoring and everything. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, yeah, we're pretty much right at a half hour there with that tutorial. Um, so, again, we didn't go through every single mode, but, again, it's more of you don't need to understand all the mode rules. It's just kind of light mode, start mode, like I said. And then if you happen to play all nine modes, then the Royal Rumble is the final wizard mode. Um, I won't uh, go into that because I kind of like everyone to experience those on their own. Plus, we could play here for two hours a night and not even get there. So, All right, so that's the tutorial. I'm going to go stop and start the recording again so, um, so we can just go on with a standard stream and... Uh, yeah, I'll be right back. Thanks.